Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Vladimir Putin? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Vladimir Putin was born in what is now St. Petersburg, Russia, on October 7, 1952. His father was in the Soviet Navy, and his mother was a factory worker. Putin took an interest in judo at the age of 12, which has persisted for many years. He graduated from college in 1975, and then worked as a foreign intelligence officer in the KGB. Putin married in 1983. The couple has two daughters. The marriage ended sometime around 2013. Vladimir Putin resigned from the KGB in 1991 to launch a political career. In 1996, he joined the administration of President Boris Yeltsin. Putin was the director of the Federal Security Service and Security Council for a short time, but then in August of 1999, he was appointed as prime minister. When Boris Yeltsin resigned, Putin became the acting president, a few months later, he was elected as president. In 2004, he was re-elected and served four years. He then served as prime minister for four years before being elected to president again in 2012. In 2018, he was once again re-elected as president. Putin is a controversial leader in Russia. There are serious questions about the legitimacy of his presidency. For example, elections have not been transparent. Free speech has been suppressed, and political activists have a way of ending up in prison there. Despite his authoritarian approach, Putin enjoyed very high approval ratings in Russia for many years, typically over 80%. In 2018, his approval rating dropped into the low 60s, which still seemed unnaturally elevated, just like Joe Biden's 2022 approval rating of 40%. It's hard to imagine how it's that high. Putin has been recognized outside of Russia as well. For example, Forbes magazine ranked him the world's most powerful individual from 2013 all the way through 2016. Under Putin's leadership, Russia has maintained a good deal of influence in former Soviet states. After the 2014 Ukrainian revolution, Russia annexed Crimea. Putin appears to believe that Ukraine is destined to be part of Russia. He has referred to Ukraine as Little Russia. He said that Russian and Ukrainian peoples are practically one people. Putin suggested that Ukraine was not an independent state. He believes Ukraine was entirely created by Russia and stolen from the Russian Empire. Putin's interest in Ukraine is also tied to the economy. Controlling Ukraine would result in a financial benefit for Russia. In 2022, Putin recognized two separatist-held regions in Ukraine as independent and deployed troops to those areas. At the time making this video, it appears as though a full-scale invasion of Ukraine by Russia is imminent. Now moving to my analysis. Vladimir Putin has been described in many ways. On the negative side, he has been called a bully, a dictator, and an aspiring cult leader. He has been described as arrogant, self-centered, power-hungry, manipulative, moody, and callous. On the positive side, he has been described as pragmatic, patient, calm, resourceful, determined, analytical, and at times, reasonable. Vladimir Putin positions himself as a vigorous advocate for Russia. He has a profound distrust of the West and believes the Russian people do as well. When the Soviet Union collapsed, many Russians believed that Western influence was going to destroy the Russian economy. Putin was able to exploit these fears and rise to power. Boris Yeltsin had the appearance of selling out to the West, whereas Putin was recognized as a strong patriot, willing to stand up to foreign aggression. He wasn't going to let the West push him around or alter the political culture of Russia. Put another way, he was going to prevent Russia from becoming a true democracy. One way Putin remains popular is to maintain an aggressive foreign policy, ostensibly in the interest of Russia. Not long after rising to power, 
Putin initiated a campaign to build a public image consistent with his vision. He has been promoted as overly masculine. He wants to be a combination of an outdoorsman, tough guy, and superhero. Here are a few examples of incidents, stunts, and performances apparently designed to promote a manly man image. Putin has been seen using his judo skills to throw opponents to the ground. There's an image of Putin behind the wheel of a Formula One race car. Putin used a tranquilizer gun to save a group of reporters from a Siberian tiger. I guess Putin wasn't manly enough to use his judo skills in this instance. Groups of attractive women have produced products for Putin, including videos and a calendar. The women appear to be enamored with his overwhelming masculinity. On one occasion, the deputy prime minister posted photos on social media showing one image of Putin holding a leopard next to an image of Barack Obama holding a poodle. The caption read, We have different values and different allies. Moving to the last example, Putin has been photographed shirtless, riding a horse, fishing, and hunting. Putin's apparent difficulty in keeping his shirt on is reminiscent of a condition Matthew McConaughey suffered from for many years. Many people believe that Putin's image did not form by accident. Rather, it is the result of a carefully crafted PR campaign managed by the Kremlin. Putin has been held up as the ultimate Russian man of action, a savior to Russia. Stone cold, exceedingly confident, unafraid, and 100% manly. In addition to promoting Putin as excessively masculine, the Kremlin has insulted his opponents by suggesting they suffer from a deficit of manliness. Putin has tried to convince the Russian people that the world is a dangerous place. It's out to get them. It's out to restrict Russian expansion and to endanger its security. He wants them to believe that only a leader who possesses profound macho assertiveness can save Russia. With all this in mind, what is Vladimir Putin's personality profile? This is just my opinion. It's worth noting that his persona could simply be an act. Based on the available evidence, Putin appears to be low in openness to experience. He has conservative values and tends to think in concrete terms as opposed to thinking abstractly. He's high in conscientiousness. He is pragmatic, cautious, and has a good work ethic. His level of extroversion is mid-range. He is analytical, but also somewhat sensation-seeking. I think he wants to appear as very extroverted. He has low agreeableness. He is not trusting, altruistic, or modest. Putin appears to have low neuroticism. He is not emotionally reactive to the point of being callous. He is not particularly angry, depressed, or anxious, and he is able to delay gratification. What about the dark triad traits? Many people believe that Putin has high levels of psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. Let's take a look at each of the dark triad traits and see how they compare to Putin's behavior. Psychopathy can be divided into primary and secondary, so there are two types. Primary characteristics include deceptiveness, grandiosity, superficial charm, callousness, and being manipulative. Secondary psychopathy has characteristics like impulsivity, irresponsibility, lack of long-term goals, criminality, and failure to control behavior. Putin's behavior aligns with characteristics in both types of psychopathy, but more strongly with primary psychopathy. Narcissism can also be divided into two categories, grandiose and vulnerable. With grandiose, we see someone who is socially dominant, extroverted, arrogant, and resistant to criticism. Vulnerable narcissism is characterized by hypersensitivity to criticism, resentfulness, shame, and distrust. Just as with psychopathy, we see alignment here with both types of narcissism, but a stronger connection to grandiose narcissism. Machiavellianism is characterized by being manipulative at a strategic level, cynical, calculating, not seeking attention, having impulse control, and believing that the ends justify the means. Other than the not seeking attention part, Putin's behavior aligns strongly with Machiavellianism. Now moving to my final thoughts. Vladimir Putin's persona appears to be consistent with factor one psychopathy, 
grandiose narcissism, and Machiavellianism. Although he is not particularly intelligent, he is calculating and determined. He promotes himself as a glorious and necessary leader who seeks to revisit the nostalgia of the Soviet era and restore Russia to greatness. Despite making some rational decisions during his political career and generally avoiding impulsive behavior, Vladimir Putin is still dangerous. The only thing that somebody like Putin understands is force and strength. His decisions are not motivated by empathy, compassion, or a sense of morality, but rather by the potential glory and admiration he can obtain weighed against his fear of losing his power. Those are my thoughts on the case of Vladimir Putin. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.